Hey again, Facebook, and happy Saturday. I hope you've had a good start to your weekend. Um, pretty full one for me this weekend, so it's been good, though. Um, just looking at uh, some things that we're looking at doing ourselves. So um, in terms of housing situation for us, try and get out of the rental situation. So um, hopefully it's all coming together. Who knows? But anyway, enough of that. Um, I hope your Saturday was great. Welcome to any new likers that have jumped on board in the last little while. And again, look, apologies, I'm still having trouble with my internet. I just can't, can't seem to get uh, a good signal through to um, keep the connection really strong. But anyway, let's um, power on through. So, comment left a um, couple of days back about me having a bit of my two cents worth in the space on um music in church, uh, on instruments, on style, on that kind of thing. So here we go. This is my two cents worth. I think where I'd start with this space is um, there's already been one blog post that I've put up here uh, on my site, a written blog post. Um, I think, unfortunately, uh, and particularly with the way that now um, there's a global spread of, of music, um, much more than ever before, I think that perhaps there's too much influence coming from too few. And so we're losing some of the uniqueness that was in um, different styles of music that would be found in churches. So, you know, for instance, um, when we've been up into Cambodia a number of times, and, you know, it's great in some respects to be able to land there and, and um, you know, be singing songs that are familiar to you and hearing uh, Cambodian people sing songs that are familiar to you, but in Khmer, in their native language that's great but at the same time there's something of a loss of you know um, the other music that you hear in Cambodia the traditional music and the different sounds that are in that um, sounds nothing like your kind of contemporary westernized um, worship that we're used to like your Hillsong and um, Bethel and Dave Crowder and yada 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 so I think um, we need to be careful that we don't lose um, uniqueness and sort of just become a blandy, blandy, one sound fits all um, kind of thing. I think um, we need to acknowledge that, um, particularly with music, you know, there's a role for music uh, when we're singing together. You, you know, music needs to um, be a certain way for that to occur. Uh, it needs to be in the right kind of tonal register to, to make it uh, work well for, for congregations. It needs to be a kind of song that, that can be easily sung um, by people if they're to be singing it together. Um, you know, I think um, I'm, I'm not going to go into the space uh, around um, the, the words and things like that. I think that's another, another post at another time, and that wasn't in the question that was left in the comments. So... Um, you know, here we're just talking more about the style rather than, let's say, the substance or whatever might actually be um, in the lyrical words. But I think there does need to be that. But I think part of what we perhaps um, don't use enough in a Western church setting is um, a sense of introducing other um, styles of music and, and different types of music that maybe aren't for us to sing but give us either space to reflect or maybe even challenge our, our um, assumptions or challenge our positions, um, maybe give us a chance to mourn, to grieve, to lament. Um, but I think that's some of the stuff we've really lost when it comes to, um, I mean, that's more in the substance side, so I'll leave that alone. I'll just say I think sometimes we've lost the vast array of what you see in, in the different uh, ways that corporate um, kind of singing um, is portrayed within, you know, Old Testament and New Testament, things like that. Um, look, I don't think we should be too worried around what instruments are used in a church. That's my personal opinion. Uh, I, I don't believe there's a sense of, you know, some instruments are, are more godly than other instruments. Um, you know, and I think it's not surprising that we've seen, um, you know, so it's like the hymns were so prominent for so long within within the churches and then all of a sudden um, 
you know, it was kind of choruses and then choruses, uh, you know, you wouldn't call the, the new music that we see these days kind of choruses. That was more um, the songs that came before the songs we have now, um, sort of more through the 70s, 80s. You had like choruses that accompanied uh, your hymns and different things like that. So um, it's not surprising, though, that, that there's been that massive speed up, that since hymns have been replaced, that the churn... I guess is one word you might use to describe it, of um, different songs has been much faster. Um, so there's not been the longevity in the, the sort of style of music that's stayed um, because we just don't have that in our culture either. Uh, so our culture, the, the style of music and um, those kind of things, because of the ways we can now um, communicate and the shrinking of our world into a global village, as McLuhan would call it, uh, where we're interconnected and, and those kind of things, means that there is this faster pace of, of churn and our technology enables us to create music much easier. You know, like if you think back, um, you, you, you had music and people gathering around the piano in the home and, and, and that was a kind of activity, a family activity, and we don't have that anymore. So it's not then surprising um, that as things have sped up um, and we all now have iPods with endless array of choice in music that we kind of are, are keeping up with stuff that we want to listen to and feel like uh, engages us and, and draws us in emotionally uh, in, in different ways. So um, it's not surprising that musical style is continuing to shift as, at a rapid rate. So I would say that as well. Um, but at the same time, yeah, I think there's, there's way more, more room to explore. Um, on a personal level, you know, like I don't really um, you know, dig a lot of the, the contemporary um, Christian music that you would hear in churches. Like I don't really have CDs of the songs that are sung um, in churches and things like that um, because it just doesn't resonate with me um, at, a, at a musical style kind of level. Um, and so I do think there is room to consider how, um, as a church, you may use music, uh, in particular styles of music, to reach into other cultures, subcultures. Um, so, you know, if you want to be reaching into the kind of... Um, youth, um, young people in a kind of um, urbanised uh, setting that are, you know, right into their kind of um, hip-hops and, and things like that, then, you know, why, why not consider that when the group comes together, that, that's part of what you do. You, 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 you don't sort of do what the church down the road's doing, but you, you're specifically wanting to uh, engage with a group of people that that's part of the language that they speak because you know music is part of the language that we speak that's why it resonates so deeply and you know there'll be points in your life where you'll remember exactly what song was playing um, because it was a very important part in your life and when that song comes on and you hear that you it takes you back to that place and time and and those kind of things and so I think there's probably more room to explore um, how we do this. And I think there are some churches that, that do move into that space. Um, you know, and I think it's particularly a challenge for the Australian church because, you know, quite frankly, particularly uh, men, you, you know, this is the style of music that we have in churches is not the style of music that most men uh, spend their time listening to and resonate with, um, that they're listening to and getting the messages from uh, continually and over and over again and you know so if we're not able to kind of also be in in a, in a space like that um, and again not trying to do crummy second-rate knockoffs um, unfortunately that's also one of the bad things that I think we've done Christian music scene has done is where it's not sought to be creative in its own rights at some times and, and really just done crummy knockoffs of something that already exists um, but you know thinking about how we could, uh, we can um, deliberately use a particular communication tool, such as the style of music that that you might use, um, to invite um, people in into uh, a place where they can meet with um, other Christians and and come into contact with other Christians and and ultimately come into contact with Christ. So, um, you know, 
be drawn into that journey as, as a welcoming, inviting uh, space. Um, and so, you know, I don't know, it's a bit of a ramble tonight, I guess, but, but that's my two cents. I think there's a lot more that we can do in this space. Um, and, you know, I think what it's going to take is, is bold people with bold visions to actually um, embrace, um, not just follow in the footsteps and, and do what everybody else has done, but but explore the peripheries and explore the boundaries and, um, yeah, do that with a deliberate intention of, of making more of, of such an awesome and powerful way of communicating and, and creating community around music, around song. Um, so, yeah, that's my two cents. I think we can more. Um, look, at the same time, before um, people might get upset that, you know, the hymns are gone and all of that sort of stuff, like m me personally, um, the most emotionally impactful kind of um, Christian music-y kind of thing um, really for me is uh, the old hymns. I mean, and that's just because of my story and I grew up in a, um, a church time and a church place that the old hymns were really sung a lot and I can remember some particular, in particular, some men's convention kind of events, all men events, where you got hundreds of men just booming out these old hymns um, you know, and that really resonated with me far more than a, a, a you know, a contemporary lights and smoke and band um, kind of show ever has. Um, so don't think I'm saying we there's not a place to continue. And I think there's um, certainly one of the things Milk Gluen talks about um, is that as, as we move forward, the, things from the past that get brought back come back in in sort of very new and and niched ways and you know so there's maybe space and I think this is what some people are, are looking for and are searching for too where that more traditional service is is perhaps more of what they want because they don't want church to just be like their culture around them they want it to be something different they want it to be something that that, that is countercultural that sits sort of as this strange kind of juxtaposition in the week that re-centres them and re-focuses uh, them in a new way. So, look, I think there's heaps we can do in this space. And I guess my two cents is um, we're not doing enough because we all want to kind of be the same. Um, and I think that's that's um, uh, it's, that's a shame. So, um, yeah, that's my two cents. Um, tag a friend if you've got worship leaders or things like that. Maybe this is an ideal one for them to be tagged in. Um, leave your comments below if you want me to give two cents on something. Um, you might get a ramble. You might get something a little more coherent. But it is Saturday after all, so come on. Um, I'm a little bit uh, relaxed right now tonight, just chilling out. Um, looking forward to Father's Day tomorrow and a birthday tomorrow. We've got one of our, one of our sons is... Um, having his birthday tomorrow and he's also playing in a grand final so it's a it's a chill out before the storm so um i look forward to seeing you again tomorrow uh, and until then all right cheers have a good night